Making everyone happy on vacation isn't easy. But you know what is? Going to Aruba. All you have to do is walk out your door to find pristine pools, relaxing white sand beaches, and an island teeming with outdoor activities that'll put a smile on any face. You won't just feel great, you'll all feel great, filled with a calmer, more peaceful vibe that radiates Aruba's warmth. And the best part is, it never fades. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your family trip at aruba.com. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2087, Where Our Relationship Patterns Come From, by Dr. Lisa Firestone of psychalive.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of ORD. With me, your host and narrator, Greg Audino. Happy Saturday, and thank you so much for making some time to join us over the weekend. You'll be glad you did today, as we are going to check out a really helpful post for understanding the origins of our biases and behavior in relationships of all kinds. If you've ever tried to better understand yourself or your partner, then this article is definitely for you. So let's see what we can learn as we optimize your life. Where Our Relationship Patterns Come From by Dr. Lisa Firestone of psychalive.org What makes us act and react the way we do when it comes to love? In an ideal world, we would all be born with perfectly attuned parents who love us truly and are there for us whenever we need them, but who also give us just the right amount of space and independence to flourish and fully develop our unique selves. Parents would provide a solid base from which we could venture out as separate individuals. They'd make us feel safe, seen and soothed, and therefore secure. While all this sounds great, Dr. Ed Tronick, an associate professor of pediatrics at Harvard University, has found in his research that even the best parents, the ones who form secure relationships with their kids, only get it right about 30% of the time. For pretty much everyone, Relationships with our early caretakers are complex and likely include some frustration and pain. Yet, whether we grew up with a secure or insecure attachment pattern, one thing is for sure. Our present relationships are heavily influenced by our earliest attachments. The way we experienced relationships in our very early lives creates an internal working model for how we view relationships throughout our lives. In other words, Our past relationships affect everything, from who we choose as a partner, to how we are likely to interact with them, and what behavior we will elicit from them. Our early relationships provide a template for how relationships go. Can I depend on others? Will they soothe me when I need it? Will they see me for who I really am? How we adapted to our relationships, the defenses we formed, also shape how we will behave toward romantic partners. For example, Do you believe you are better off not depending on others and taking care of yourself? Or do you believe the opposite, that you need to get your significant other to take care of you, and therefore you are preoccupied by getting their attention? Are you trapped in a double bind of being afraid to get close to anyone, yet terrified of being alone? In many ways, the attachment style we formed early on impacts how we behave in relationships and how we expect others to behave. If we're wondering why certain dynamics keep playing out or patterns keep developing in our relationships, it's important to consider the working models we're bringing to the table. The early attachment styles we experienced shape these internal working models. For example, many people grow up with an avoidant attachment to a parent. They may not have felt that they could get their needs met easily by that parent and therefore adapted to become more self-contained and self-sufficient. As adults, they carry this model with them. They may not think people will be there for them, so they rely on themselves and resist trusting or getting too close. On the other hand, many people grow up with an ambivalent attachment style in which they felt they had to cling to their parent or caretaker in order to get their needs met. 
Their parent may have been available and attuned some of the time, and then all of a sudden they'd be neglectful or rejecting. The parents may even become emotionally hungry at times, attempting to get their own needs met by their child. As a result, these people may grow up feeling desperate, insecure, and clingy toward a romantic partner. Our working models affect the way we see the world. We often perceive people as reflections of our past, assuming they will think and behave in certain patterns. We may also unconsciously choose partners who fit these patterns, whose own attachment styles complement or mesh with ours. For example, if we grew up feeling ignored, we may find ourselves in relationships with people who are unavailable, aloof, cold, or flat-out rejecting. If we felt intruded on as kids, we may choose people who are controlling, jealous, or demanding. When two people come together, they both have their own working models that affect each other. Both partners may engage in behaviors that push or provoke each other in ways that encourage each other to play the other half of these old, familiar dynamics. As couples play out their side of the model, their relationships can start to look more and more like those of their past. This reinforces each partner's working model, confirming what they already believe about love and relationships. The good news is, we are not doomed to repeat the patterns of our past. We can change our model, but we have to identify it so we can challenge it. Because our expectations and ideas about relationships form from our early experiences, it's necessary to make sense of those experiences in order to create healthier relationships in the present. Allowing our past to consume us emotionally does not work, but neither does burying the past and pretending like it doesn't affect us. What does work is creating a coherent narrative. Attachment researchers speak of the importance of creating a coherent narrative as a technique for developing inner security, which allows us to form more healthy adult relationships. Through the adult attachment interview, developed by Mary Main and her colleagues, researchers found that by assessing how well people are able to make sense of and convey their life story, it is possible to predict the attachments they will form with their children. It turns out that no matter how difficult a person's childhood was, if they're able to make sense of and feel the full feeling of what they experienced as children, they are better able to form healthier ties with people close to them in the present. In the online course I co-lead with Dr. Daniel Siegel, Making Sense of Your Life, he and I discuss how to go about the steps of creating a coherent narrative. We encourage people to explore their attachment history and understand the large and small early life events that shape who they are today. This endeavor is one that doesn't just benefit our romantic relationships, but every relationship we form in life. As Dr. Siegel has said, quote, The fantastic news is that if you can make sense of your childhood experiences, especially your relationships with your parents, you can transform your attachment models toward security. The reason this is important is that relationships with friends, with romantic partners, with present or possible future offspring will be profoundly enhanced. And you'll feel better with yourself, too. You just listened to the post titled where Our Relationship Patterns Come From, by Dr. Lisa Firestone of psychalive.org. Now, I am a big believer that if you want to be your best self in your relationships, or in anything you do, you need to fuel yourself properly. And that's why I'm so happy to have this show sponsored by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale, and healthy options done easily. Not to mention it's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing anywhere from 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime with no hassle whatsoever if something changes. So. Head to factormeals.com slash optimal50, that's optimal50, and use code optimal50 to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. I've got kids, and that means it's always about them. 
But I need support too. That's where Ollie comes in with their delightful, hardworking gummies. My partner and I can actually get a good night's sleep, so we'll both stand a chance of managing our stress responses. Even when the kids are doing parkour in the living room, discover Ollie vitamins and supplements. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And thanks so much to Dr. Lisa for another great and informative post. Needless to say, this one has a lot of information to chew on, but perhaps what I liked best is the note that it ended on about how we are not incapable of escaping the relationship patterns we were raised into. You know, so many of the articles we read on this show address how we are predisposed to certain attributes as adults because of how we grew up. But predisposition and fate are not the same thing. So whether it's your attachment style, your introversion, your extroversion, your sensitivity, your jealousy, whatever it might be, these types of articles are written to inform you of where many of these tendencies might come from. And in the better written ones, like today's, they offer tools and or reassurance for you to overcome them should you want to. But these articles are not written to seal your fate. And if you're worried about these parts of yourself, then I caution you to not look to these types of write-ups as verification that you are limited to the circumstance you were born into. You know, sometimes it can feel easier to sulk and say that we have no choice in the matter. Don't let yourself extract that from an article like this. It, th- that is not what they're saying, it's not the point, and it's certainly not true. You do have the power to change your blueprint in a lot more ways than you probably realize. We all do. But with that, we are going to wrap things up for today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and making another episode possible. Enjoy your Saturday, and be sure to come back tomorrow for our bonus episode, as well as our regularly scheduled episode. That's where your optimal life awaits.